So you're thinking about moving to Newport, Rhode Island? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you on my desktop a map of Newport, Rhode Island, and I'm gonna show you exactly everything you need to know about Newport, Rhode Island. So if this is your first time to the channel and you're looking to know everything there is about living in Rhode Island, subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Rhode Island. My name is Devin and my team and I, we get calls and emails every single day from people just like you looking to make their move to Rhode Island and we absolutely love it. Whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email so we can help you make a smooth transition here to Rhode Island. In this video, we're gonna jump over to the map on my desktop and let's take a look around. So, as you guys can see on my screen here, this is a map of Newport and I wanted to highlight an overview of Newport so you can really get the ins and outs of living in Newport. So the first thing I wanna focus on is kind of its proximity to different locations in Rhode Island. So if you're looking kind of off to the left here, Jamestown is about a 10 minute ride uh, from Newport. As you carry over the Jamestown Bridge, uh, you're gonna hit North Kingstown, Narragansett. So Narragansett, that's gonna be about a 35 to 40 minute drive. Uh, North Kingstown's probably gonna be closer to a 20 minute drive. And as you move up north, uh, you'll take Route 4, uh, which you'll go through East Greenwich. Again, that's a probably about a 25 minute drive from Newport. And you'll then go on to 95. So as you go up 95, you pass through West Warwick and Warwick. Um, here, uh, is the uh, Providence Airport. So it is in Warwick, it's not in Providence. It takes you probably 40 minutes from Newport to get to the airport. So if you're traveling to the airport, make sure you give yourself enough time. Um, it is easy in, easy out. Uh, when you fly out of Providence Airport, there tends to be very little traffic, very little congestion. Uh, so it's a great airport to fly, to fly out of. Um, as you come back down 95 here and kind of jump back down to Route 4, um, as you can see, you'll take then 138 and then you'll cross the Jamestown Bridge and then the Newport Bridge. Um, as you'll see kind of the backside of Newport, um, you have Middletown, which is literally the neighboring um, town right next door to Newport. And then that will transition you into Portsmouth. Um, now Portsmouth, you can take Route 24 uh, up to Boston. So a lot of people from Boston will obviously travel down 195, jump onto Route 24, and then head into Newport, Portsmouth, and Middletown this way. Uh, you can also uh, merge off of 24 and head to Bristol. Uh, Bristol reminds me a lot of Newport. It's a very small town, but quaint, uh, just like Newport. So just want to give you guys some scale and proximity of where Newport's located. Now, to get to Boston, I would give yourself about two hours. This is why Newport, as you can see located right here, is gonna be a very popular spot for people that live in Boston because you can travel down 24, take 93, and hit not a lot of traffic compared to maybe the Cape. You tend to hit a lot more traffic as you head to the Cape uh, versus Newport. So that's about a two hour uh, commute. Um, also, uh, Connecticut is a big market that likes to buy in Newport as well. Uh, Connecticut's going to be between two and two and a half hours, depending on where in Connecticut you live. And then ultimately, New York is a big spot for people that, that uh, are living in New York. They want to get out of the city um, and they want to travel to Newport. So that's about a three and a half to four hour drive. So as you can see, we're between, you know, really two major cities, New York and Boston. And that's what makes Newport such a great place uh, to visit and have a second home or even live if you don't have to go into the city that often uh, for work. So let's kind of jump into the different neighborhoods um, that kind of exist in Newport. Um, so the first neighborhood I want to point off is point out, excuse me, is right when you come off the Newport Bridge, um, you can take this first off ramp. If the off ramp is backed up, um, you can take the ramp straight ahead and come around, go to the Rotary, and then take Third Street to get to the new to, to get to the point. So if you're if you don't want to wait in traffic and the bridge is super backed up, just go straight. Go around the rotary, come back, come down, go down Third Street and hit the point. So this is the point. Uh, a lot of people like this section of town. Uh, one, it's very quiet. In one of my Newport vlogs, I talked about how it reminded me a lot of Charleston, South Carolina. And people really like the point because everything is well maintained. Um, again, it looks like kind of South uh, Charleston, South Carolina. 
and it's about a 20 minute walk into the heart of Newport. I would consider the heart of Newport kind of this corner right here, um, where the Red Parrot and um, Midtown Oyster Bar, I would consider that the heart of Newport because it's a it's kind of in the middle of, of Thames Street. So again, people like this area. It's got a very neighborhood feel. Uh, you can walk out over here um, and enjoy Gurney's, which is the hotel right out here. There's incredible sunsets. And again, it's very walkable to downtown, but private as well. Now, just above it is gonna be, people call it North Broadway, people call it the Broadway area. So the Broadway area, I actually own some real estate over here, um, but the Broadway area, I believe, has the greater or the greatest opportunity for appreciation. The homes in this area are still very affordable. Um, some homes are fixed up, some homes are not, um, but, it, but uh, it provides a, a lot of opportunity uh, during, in the Malbone area, the Van Zandt area. So this is really kind of where I'm highlighting my marker here. This is really kind of Upper Broadway. It does sneak back over here as well, um, but the majority of Upper Broadway is going to be right here. Admiral Calfus, this road right here, really separates kind of the Newport Middletown line. So uh, this road is very busy. Uh, just to give you a heads up, this road is gonna be very busy. Uh, it's, it's heavily traveled when people exit out of Newport. This is, tends to be the road that they take. So you're just off that area right here. Uh, kind of leading as we go down Broadway, you're gonna find a lot of restaurants, a, a ton of shopping. If you're in the Van Zandt area on Hall Ave, Clinton Ave, Park Street, Gould Street, Broadway is, is very walkable. Um, so Broadway has picked up a ton of momentum over the last several years. Um, it's, really, it's really improved and, and a lot of people like living on this side of town because it is easy to get out of Newport um, when you'd like to leave and, and head out and travel over the Newport Bridge. So living on you know, North Broadway or, or the Broadway section of Newport is, is gonna be very easy uh, to get out of town. As we kind of move down Broadway, uh, we'll talk about the Eustis Ave neighborhood. So the Eustis Ave neighborhood is kind of on the back side of Upper Broadway. So Eustis Ave, a lot of the homes in here are, are really well maintained. Uh, people like it because it's, I wouldn't say it's tremendously walkable to downtown. It is walkable if you're somebody who likes to walk a lot. But this neighborhood, it's very quiet. Um, it, it definitely has a neighborhood feel. You don't feel like you're in the center of chaos as you obviously move down into Newport. It's a heavy tourist attraction. So a lot of people are traveling here to be in downtown Newport. So, you know, Eustis Ave uh, is actually a pretty heavily traveled street. So if you are living on Eustis, a lot of people will cut through Eustis to get to Memorial right here. So if you don't like a street that has a tremendous amount of traffic on it, moving to like Topa Ave, uh, Keir Ave, Holton Ave, um, you know, Whitwell Ave, these streets are gonna be far less traveled than, than Eustis Ave. Um, as we come out of Eustis Ave, you're gonna see this is Memorial Boulevard. So Memorial Boulevard kind of separates this side of town and that side of town of Newport. And this is where we begin to kind of hit um, the Bellevue Ave area. So Bellevue Ave is a very well-known area, as I mentioned in one of my Newport video vlogs, that this area right here was probably one of the wealthiest streets in the world at one point in time. Uh, a lot of properties on this street are private residents. Um, they're people that are looking for a tremendous amount of privacy. Their homes tend to be very gated. Um, they're not easy to access and people want that and, and they want that privacy, especially with that type of wealth. Uh, they do want their privacy. Also on Bellevue Ave, you're gonna have a variety of different mansions uh, that you can choose from and, and visit. Um, they've been preserved. You can pay to go travel those, those mansions. Um, the Marble House, um, there's a lot of other mansions to travel and it's definitely worth your time uh, to check out. Now, as you tra travel further down Bellevue, you kind of hit in the Ruggles Ave area. I also own another property in this area and Ruggles Ave is kind of on the back side of Newport. So if you are gonna live in the Ruggles Ave, towards the end of Bellevue, Ocean Drive area, it is gonna take longer for you to get out of town in the summer because the traffic does back up. And it backs up because there's really a, only a few major streets out of town. You have Bellevue Ave right here, and you have Spring Street. Thames Street is one way all the way down, so your two really outs are Spring Street and Bellevue. Now, if you know the area well, 
Um, so this is a little secret you guys can take. If you come down Bellevue and go down Narragansett, you can turn left onto Annadale, come out onto Memorial, and then travel down Rhode Island Ave, and take Rhode Island Ave, turn onto Broadway, and you can get out by going down Van Zandt. So that's one way to avoid a lot of the traffic that backs up on Bellevue and Spring Street. So hopefully too many people aren't taking that advice because then I won't have a, <laughs> a cut through anymore. Um, so the Ruggles Ave area, a lot of homes in here are, are, are well appointed as well. Uh, there tends to be a lot more space over here, a lot more uh, yard between the homes. So Ruggles Ave is, is a very walkable area. Ruggles Ave does tend to be busy. So if you're living on Shield Street or Bateman Ave, uh, you can walk easily uh, to the lower end of Thames Street, which is kind of, which is right here. So there's gonna be a shell right on the corner. So it's about a 10 minute walk um, to Lower Thames, which is obviously where a lot of the restaurants and a lot of the shops and boutique shops exist. Now, as you move even further out, you're gonna have Ocean Drive. So here's Ocean Drive, it's 10 miles. It's an incredible drive. I would recommend that you do it. And the homes out here are pristine. These again are gonna be very private, like the homes on Bellevue. Uh, these homes are, are gonna be in the high millions. Um, but again, most of these homes on Ocean Drive are gonna have water views um, and a, a tremendous amount of privacy. So again, uh, people with a tremendous amount of wealth are gonna wanna own over here uh, for that privacy and for that exclusivity because homes out here don't come for sale that much. Um, so those are really, that's really a highlight of the neighborhoods. There is one more neighborhood that I wanna show you. Um, this is gonna be Historic Hill. So Historic Hill is located really kind of, Toro separates it, Bellevue Ave, Mill Street, and Spring Street. So this tends to be Historic Hill. Um, the homes in here are heavily sought after uh, only because it, it does have a, a, a level of privacy, um, but also you're able to walk into town. Uh, those that wanna be able to keep their car exactly where they are, they don't wanna battle any traffic, they can walk right downtown, take Mary Street, become right onto Thame Street, and it's about, I would say from here, Historic Hill, to again, that center of town, it's gonna to be about a 10 or 15 minute walk. So it makes it really easy um, to get into town. Um, now keep in mind, Newport's population size um, is gonna be about 25,000 um, throughout the year. I believe it goes to roughly 100,000 um, during during the summer months. So you do have a, a fairly large swing between uh, summer and winter. But the thing that I like about Newport is that in the winter, uh, it does have a really strong community feel, even though it's a lot less uh, busy compared to the summer months. So you do have a community here. It's gonna be a lot, there's gonna be a lot more things to do than let's say maybe Jamestown, Block Island, Bristol, etc. So that one, that is one thing I do like about Newport. Now. Let me highlight some of my rest some of my favorite restaurants that I like going to. Um, some restaurants that maybe you've never heard of, or restaurants uh, you still have to check out. So the White Horse Tavern uh, right here. So that is located um, right off of Marlboro Street, um, oldest tavern in the United States, I believe. So this is a great restaurant to check out. Also, you have the Mooring. This is a great restaurant to check out as well. Uh, Twenty Two Bones. Um, this is these two restaurants are owned by. Newport Restaurant Group. Uh, I think they do a fabulous job. Their food's always good. Um, so these are two great restaurants to check out. So 22 Bones, The Mooring. Uh, you do have Clark Cookhouse here on Bannister's Wharf, uh, right here. Uh, it's next to the Black Pearl. Um, and also a great Mexican restaurant, Diego's right here. So the Bannister's Wharf is, is right here. There's gonna be a tremendous amount of shopping and restaurants in this area um, for you to check out. So there is parking. Uh, right in front of the mooring. The mooring does not own the parking lot, but just a side note that you can park uh, right in front of the mooring. Um, one of the restaurants that I like to point out, uh, let me see if I can find it. So that's gonna be on Mary Street. So Mary Street's right here. Um, and this is called the Grace Vanderbilt Hotel. Um, this is a great hotel, kind of a boutique hotel to stay at, but they have um, a rooftop bar and not a lot of people out of town know that a rooftop bar exists here. Um, this is a great place uh, to celebrate to celebrate maybe um, an anniversary, a birthday. It has incredible views of the harbor. Um, so it, it, you have about 180 degrees of harbor views from the Grace Vanderbilt Hotel. So make sure that you, you check that out because it's a spot not a lot of people think to go to. Uh, you have Pasta Beach, which is right here. This is on Bellevue again, incredible pizzas, uh, kind of a mix of Italian food. Um, 
and then Sardella is right here. So this is gonna be uh, a great restaurant. One of my favorite things is the penne alla vodka pink sauce. They will not list it on their menu, so you have to ask for it. Um, so those are some of the restaurants. Oh, and I don't wanna forget the Corner Cafe. Uh, I did highlight this restaurant in, in um, my Newport vlog, but you have the Corner Cafe right here. Um, they're more known for their breakfast, but they have a phenomenal breakfast. Again, a line typically builds up around 8 a.m., so make sure you get there before then. And then also right down the street is Fifth Element. So those are two really great restaurants on Broadway that have been kind of cornerstones uh, for rebuilding and the vitalization of, of Broadway. Um, one thing for your golfers out there, um, Newport Country Club. Um, Newport Country Club is gonna be out closer on Ocean Drive. Let me find it for you. Newport Country Club, here it is right here, off Harrison Ave. So Newport Country Club, it's a beautiful course. It is private, so there are no public courses uh, that you can go to in Newport. Uh, the only course that is available is Newport Country Club. If you want public golf courses, you'll have to sneak over to Middletown or Jamestown, but Newport does not offer any public golf courses. Um, as we move in, for you dog lovers out there, um, there's four dog parks um, that a lot of people go to. So one of the dog parks is Battery Park. Uh, this is gonna be in the point. Uh, this is incredible water views as well. Um, a lot of people come out here, read their books, walk their dogs. Uh, you have full views of the Newport Bridge, full views of the water. So this is a great spot to bring your furry friends. You also have Newport Dog Park. So Newport Dog Park is kind of, uh, this is considered the point all the way down. So this is gonna be right off uh, kind of your exit as you come down Third Street. There's a, right at the roundabout, there's another street here. Um, I forget the name of that street, um, but it's right at the end of that street, it's a dead end. So makes it easy to bring your dogs and spend time with them. And then also you have Morton Park, which is right here. So this is kind of towards the end of Thames Street. Uh, this is a great place to bring your friends, your children, uh, your dogs. There's plenty of room here. Uh, in the summer, you'll see a lot of people playing volleyball here. Um, so this is a great place to relax um, and, and walk your dogs, get all their energy out. Uh, things to do, uh, some of the things I wanna highlight as I did before, uh, in my Newport vlog is the Cliff Walk. So the Cliff Walk, um, this is gonna start right at the beginning of Memorial, right across from Eustis. This is three and a half mile walk all the way around. Um, again, very scenic views, uh, great thing to do with your friends, your family, uh, even walking your pets is a great way um, to burn off some from exercise and energy from them. But the Cliff Walk is something you do not wanna miss as you're, as you're traveling to Newport. Uh, one thing that people ask a lot about is for their thing, what are something that their kids can do uh, while they're here? So um, right here on Thames Street, let me show you up here. Um, you're gonna have, um, let's see, as we go up, so this is America's Cup, Thames Street, alrighty. So Pelham Street, so right on the corner is gonna be Ryan Family uh, Amusement. Uh, so they what they have is they have uh, an awesome selection of Arcade games, this is a great place to bring the kids because I understand kids have a lot of energy. I don't have any kids yet, but my friends do have a lot of kids and this is a great place to bring them. Uh, this is a great place for adults to go as well. Uh, so you wanna check out uh, Ryan Family Amusement. Um, and then also right at the end of Lower Thames here, or kind of middle of Thames, um, as we travel this way, um, you're gonna see um, as we get to, let's see, Memorial. Yeah, so right over here next to the Sailing Museum, you're gonna have Scooter World. So you can rent scooters over there. This is a great place. Um, so you can rent these three-wheeled bike scooters um, and they're awesome to take out, um, travel Ocean Drive, travel Memorial, ride them through downtown Newport. Really gives you a different perspective of being able to, uh, being able to enjoy Newport from a different viewpoint and, and uh, a different perspective. Uh, the next thing you want to do on your list is go to the mansions on Bellevue. Again, I talked about that earlier on the map, um, but these are not something you want to miss. They're incredible pieces of architecture, um, and it's something the family and you should definitely check out. The history with these homes is, is amazing. Um, so something you don't want to miss. And then also I pointed out the Tennis Hall of Fame. So the Tennis Hall of Fame, that's going to be on Bellevue as well. Uh, this is something that you don't want to miss. Um, let's see. The Tennis Hall of Fame is gonna be over this way. So here's the Tennis Hall of Fame. It's right on kind of the corner of Memorial and Bellevue. 
Tennis Hall of Fame. They have great sporting events there. Um, it's awesome to go see the professionals play, but again, something for you and the family to do is check out the International Tennis Hall of Fame. I don't think you guys will be disappointed and uh, the grass courts are pretty, pretty impressive as well. Um, one thing, uh, I would say another thing on your list of do's is make sure you go out on Ocean Drive. I kind of highlighted that neighborhood before, but Ocean Drive is 10 miles of very scenic um, route, and it's something that uh, should not be missed while you're here in Newport. Um, some things that I want to highlight for you guys, some recommended hotels. Um, so you have the Hammett's Hotel, uh, Newport Marriott, uh, the Brenton Hotel, uh, Viking Hotel, which is right here. These hotels are, and then also the Grace Vanderbilt Hotel, that's on Mary Street, that has the rooftop rooftop deck and bar. But these kind of hotels right here are really in the center of town. They're all walkable. I think I mentioned the Brenton Hotel as well. They're all walkable, all great places to stay. So if you're looking for some great hotels, make sure to check those out. And then one thing that people always ask me is what are some great places to get married at? Newport is known for its wedding venues. Um, a lot of people come to Newport to get married. So some of the top venues on your list are gonna be Belmare. So Belmare is out on Goat Island. It does have uh, awesome water views as well. So Belmare is gonna be near the point. As you come off the Newport Bridge, you'll have to go over um, the bridge right here and then you're out onto Goat Island. Um, so that's one of the spots I recommend, recommend. Also you have Castle Hill. So Castle Hill is right out here. Um, this has awesome, awesome, water views, you have sailboats that travel in and out of here through the channel. I, I got married at Ocean Cliff, which is right next door. Ocean Cliff, I would say, has really nice views as well. Probably not as good as Castle Hill, but again, great spot to be married, great place to, um, great place to be able to enjoy um, you know, a wedding with family and friends. So those are some of the, some of the wedding spots I recommend. There's one more, um, I think it's gonna be one of the more expensive, um, and that's Rose Cliff. Uh, so Rosecliff um, has water views of the East Bay here. Um, so Rosecliff is one of the spots. So the four spots that you're gonna look at that I recommend are Ocean Cliff, Castle Hill, Rosecliff, um, and Belmare. So those are four of the top well-known venue spots. Um, a little bit of insight as far as parking. Newport is extremely busy in the summer. So two parking lots that I recommend is there's a parking garage at the Newport Marriott. So you can park there, walk down America's Cup. This is about a 10 or 15 minute walk into Newport, not a big deal. And then I mentioned this before, but you also have parking in front of the morning. You will pay for both, but it's a lot better. Newport tends to have a lot of streets that are tight. Unfortunately, a lot of cars do get hit as people are traveling up and down these one-way streets. So, and parking tickets are, there's plenty of parking tickets to give it out, um, to give out. So just pay for the parking, be at peace, let your car sit there, and that way you don't have to worry about your car getting hit or having to pay a parking ticket. Um, let's see, one thing that uh, for people that are coming into town, you have St. Michael's School. Uh, this is a private school, it's on Rhode Island Ave. Uh, this is gonna be a private school that a lot of people send their kids to. It's one of the better schools in Newport. Um, some of the other uh, public schools are gonna be more towards the upper side of Broadway, uh, kind of over, over in this area. So just so you can kind of locate and get your feeling for schools. And then everybody loves sweets. So my favorite places to get ice cream, uh, my two favorite places are gonna be Kilwins. So Kilwins is gonna be right next to Pelham, kind of in between Mill Street and Pelham Street. Kilwins is right here. Um, great place to grab ice cream. And then you also have Ben & Jerry's. So Ben & Jerry's are on Lower Thames Street, uh, right about in this area. Uh, maybe up a little further. So right about here is gonna be your Ben and Jersey, Jerry's. So if you're looking for dessert, um, that's gonna be a great, great place for you and the family to check out. So those are some of the major neighborhoods, uh, restaurants, things to do, uh, different ins and outs of Newport that you should know. So if you're looking for more information, you know where to find us.